welcome back to the channel or if it's your first time here obviously just welcome to the channel great start Okay, so you may notice two things straight away. Number one, obviously, I need a haircut. And number two, I'm talking to you through the radio mic, the Yesu M90 microphone. But if I just open up the uh, the radio screen here, there you go, you can see that I'm not actually transmitting at the moment. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm capturing the raw audio from this microphone straight into the computer uh, without transmitting. But if I press my push to talk pedal, which is down on the floor down here, uh, you will see that I can also transmit on the radio as well. So here we go. So this is me talking on the radio. Uh, I'm actually currently transmitting into a dummy load. And uh, yeah, there you go. So you see, I can actually go from speaking here on the radio by using the push to talk or coming back here to speak to you on the microphone directly and not involving the radio in any way shape or form now there's a couple of reasons why you may want to do this and I'm going to show you how I had all this set up uh, firstly for me I stream uh, when I'm on the radio sometimes I do a live stream and it's good to be able to have a microphone here where I can talk into the microphone to the people in the chat who are watching on YouTube and also using the same microphone to speak to people on the radio um, the other reason as well is that very recently I've become uh, an affiliate for Heil, Heil Ham Radio and Heil Audio and in the next few weeks I'm going to be reviewing a couple of their products. The first one is the PR781 dynamic microphone and we've also got the uh, Heil Pro 7 headset, the Pro 7 headset. So both of these are specifically made for ham radio and uh, I'm going to do a bit of a deep dive on these, not just an unboxing but an actual walk you through everything about them. So that'll be coming up on the channel. Now I'm going to show you how I did all of this, how I've put it all together, uh, how you can do it at home depending on what radio you've got and various other things but I can't do it all here, there's not enough space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Matt in the workshop, uh, he's going to lay it all out for you and take you through it step by step. So off to Matt in the workshop. Thanks Matt. Obviously we need to start with the microphone so before we go any further let's go back to Matt in the shack who's going to tell us all about the different types of microphones. There's three essentially, well two and a third but anyway I'll let him explain. Back to Matt in the shack. Oh okay um, right basically there's two types of microphone. Uh, there's the condenser microphone and then there's the dynamic microphone which is like the one that I'm using now. Now a condenser microphone uh, requires a power source, usually referred to as phantom power, 48 volts. And the purpose of this is to create an electrical field between the microphone diaphragm and the back plate, which in turn creates like a rudimentary capacitor. Now, as sound waves vibrate the diaphragm when you speak, uh, the space between the diaphragm and the back plate uh, alters all the time, and this in turn creates a, a voltage which becomes your audio signal, which then goes into your radio. Now a dynamic microphone like this one, the Yesu M90, um, they don't require power to function. Uh, they utilise a diaphragm and a coil uh, and a magnet inside. They create an electromagnetic induction which forms the audio signal. Most radio manufacturers do have dynamic microphones as standard with the exception of ICOM who for some reason decided they wanted to be different and use an electric microphone. So. Remember, condenser microphone and dynamic microphone. An electric microphone is just like a condenser microphone, except it doesn't require the 48 volt phantom power. Instead, the elements inside are permanently charged and it only requires an eight volt power source, which is usually taken from the radio bias. Uh, that's a whole different ball game. We will get into that and we will talk to, talk about it a little bit when we're getting set up and showing how all of this audio connection stuff works. But uh, for now, Back to Matt in the workshop. So in this setup, what we're going to do is take a microphone and we're going to have a computer. And our radio here. And microphone. Now, forget the computer for the moment. Normally, we would have some sort of pro proprietary, ah, proprietary lead, which comes with the microphone to connect our radio here to our microphone here. In this case, this is a Yesu M90 microphone. On one end, there's an RJ45 connector, and on the other end, there's an RJ45 connector to connect to the FTDX10. Before we go any further, though, we do need to discuss the difference between balanced audio and unbalanced audio. So, back to Matt in the shack. Really? 
Right, OK, uh, there are two types of transmission lines in the world of analogue audio, or two most common types of transmission lines. There's the balanced, first of all, and that's a three-wire system. It consists of a positive, a neutral, and a shield. It's usually easily identifiable by looking at the connectors. Uh, the two most common are the XLR, as I'm showing you here, and you can see it's a three-pin system. Um, try and get that to focus a little bit for you. You can see there you've got your, your positive, your neutral and your shield connections, three pins there. And that you see those commonly attached to things like microphones. Uh, and the other connector, which you'll commonly see as well, is the TRS connector. This is a TRS connector, uh, so-called because it's got a tip here. Well, let's do this properly. Tip here and then a ring and then a shield. So three connection points. They marry up with uh, the three connection points on balanced audio. Then we have unbalanced audio. Unbalanced audio is a two wire system. It's got a positive wire and a shield wire that often doubles up as the neutral. And it's usually identified by uh, connectors like this, which is a TS connector. Then you can see that. And you can see it's different from the other one. This has only got two connection points, a tip and a shield. Um, and this one, only, like I say, only has two connection points. Uh, the other type of unbalanced audio connector that you often see, particularly in audio, is the uh, the RCA cable, as you can see there. And that's just got a, uh, a tip uh, positive, and then the actual ring around the outside doubles up as the shield and the neutral. Now, uh, balanced audio very popular amongst uh, studio work and things like that, simply because with it having a three-wire system and the positive and neutral are contained within the shield, they're less susceptible to interference uh, and RFI and those sort of things. So that's often you know, why we use um, balanced audio uh, in studios and things like that. So that's it, balanced and unbalanced audio. There's two types, a three-wire system and a two-wire system. Back to Matt in the workshop. Now, unfortunately for us, 99% of our transceivers use unbalanced audio, but almost all studio type professional microphones have XLR balanced connectors. Uh, that's these type of connectors, the three pin balanced connector, which uh, Matt in the shack has just talked about. We want our mic to connect to the radio, but also to a computer. And in order to achieve this, we're gonna use an audio interface. So let's take away the standard cable for now. This is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, and it's central to how we're going to achieve our goal. On the front, we have two XLR balanced inputs. we we'll connect our mic to one of these. We also have a gain control for each input, and also a button marked 48 volts. This is our phantom power button if we want to add any condenser style microphones rather than dynamic style microphones. We also have a headphone socket here, and this has its own independent audio if we want to monitor or listen to the audio that's going into the, into the actual scala itself. Apologies for the sound of the siren going past in the background, nothing I can do about that. We also have a large output level knob for controlling output level from the rear of the interface. On the back, we can see two output ports. These will either accept TS or TRS connections, balanced or unbalanced. And finally, over here, we have a USB-C port. The SCAL interface is also a sound card that will connect directly to the computer and simultaneously send the raw audio straight to whatever recording software you're using. So let's look at how we're going to connect all of this together. Starting with the mic, my Yesu M90 has an RJ45 connection, so we need a lead that will take RJ45 to XLR on the front of the interface here. Now, we could mess around trying to make a lead, but those lovely people at Heilham Radio have done all of that for us. So this is a CC1 XLR YM Heil lead, and it does the job perfectly. Uh, you'll notice that there's another jack here. This is a breakout push-to-talk connection where we can connect a push-to-talk switch, but we're not going to do that on the input side. Uh, so here it's going to be left unconnected. If you're connecting a studio-style microphone, uh, like a professional microphone with an XLR connector, then simply use a standard XLR mic lead here from your microphone to the actual Focusrite interface. So let's connect that up. Now, unfortunately, we do have a small problem in that this is an XLR female and this is an XLR female also, but it's quite simple to get around that. We just use a male to male adapter. Pop that on there and pop that into the front of the audio interface. 
Next, let's think about connecting the uh, interface to the computer itself. And we do that simply by using the oh, USB-C connection on the back here. So it's a case of simply attaching a USB-C lead and that lead will then run to the computer. So this is the input side, microphone, high lead, XLR connection into the interface. And from the interface, we have a USB-C to standard USB, which is going straight to the computer. And the computer will see that as a sound card or an audio device, so you can extract the audio straight from it. Finally, we need to think about connecting the back of the audio interface to the receiver, to the actual radio itself. But before we do that, we're going to head back to Matt in the shack because we need to learn a little bit about the difference between line level audio versus mic level audio. So back to Matt in the shack. Thanks, Matt. Um, as we said, whether we use a condenser mic or a dynamic microphone, when we speak into it, the elements inside move, which generate a signal which travels down the mic lead and into our device. Now, the signal itself is tiny, and I'm talking only millivolts, and it requires a certain amount of amplification known as preamp to make it useful. Now, line level audio, on the other hand, is audio that's already had this preamplification applied, and it's somewhere closer to one volt rather than being down in the millivolt level. Now, in professional audio, the more usable line level audio can then be sent to mixing desks and recording equipment. But in amateur radio, the radio itself, the transceiver, is expecting a lower level mic level audio down in the millivolts, and then the transceiver itself applies its own preamplification. We don't need line level audio at all. So back to Matt in the workshop, and he'll explain why mic level and line level are important in our setup. Thanks, Matt. So we're now at a stage where we need to connect our interface to our radio over here. And on the back of the interface, we have our line out. However, this is line level audio that's now had pre-amplification applied by the interface, and it's far too powerful for our receiver. Remember, our transceiver, our receiver, our radio here is expecting mic level audio and not line level audio. So there's one more link in the chain uh, that's going to make all of this work, and that's a DI box, or as it's also called, a direct box. And this is a dirt cheap Wanx IO passive direct box. Back to Matt in the shop for an explanation. Um, I think it's actually pronounced Wang Xiao. Right, sometimes recording artists want to plug their high impedance, low level, unbalanced connections, like a guitar lead, for instance, straight into a mixing desk or an audio interface. And as they're not going through a sort of any kind of amplification, they need a box that's going to take their unbalanced signal and make it balanced. And that's basically what a direct box does. Uh, it does have on most direct boxes switches for attenuation or scaling down the power level for some instrument inputs and often a ground loop switch which eliminates hum. The main purpose of a direct box is to convert unbalanced audio signals to balanced so they can be sent over longer distances to a mixing desk. Now a direct box can be passive or unpowered or active which is powered. They are very useful to us in our situation so let's head back to Matt in the workshop and he'll explain more. Thanks, Matt. So we're going to place a direct box in between our interface and the radio so that we can attenuate the line level output from the interface and make it a more manageable level, similar to mic level, before it gets to the transceiver. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, hang on, you said a direct box takes an unbalanced signal and converts it to balanced, but your transceiver wants an unbalanced signal. Well, yes, you're absolutely right, but that's where these amazing Heil converter leads help us out. By connecting another CC1XLRYM lead to the output side of our direct box over here, the lead itself will take care of changing this from a balanced signal to an unbalanced signal here at the radio. You can also see I've got a handy push-to-talk breakout here where I can connect my push-to-talk hand switch or push-to-talk foot switch. Finally, we just need to connect our interface to the direct box. I'm just simply going to use a TS to TS lead from the line out on the back of the Scarlet to the input of the direct box. Remember, the outputs on the back of the Scarlet support TS unbalanced and TRS balanced, TS to uh, unbalanced to unbalanced here at the DI box. That's the lead that I'm using there. And that's it. You may need to play with the level of attenuation on the direct box uh, by using the little switch here. Uh, you may also need to adjust the mic gain and the line level outputs. But apart from that, you're all set. Back to Matt in the shack. What about RFI in the shack? Well, yeah. We've added a lot of wire here on our audio line, and that can be susceptible to picking up RFI in the shack. And RFI on the audio is never a good thing. So what I've done, and you can see I've done this already, is I've attached loads of ferrite beads to all of the leads 
at any point where they connect to a device. Uh, there's some on the USB cable, they're on both Heil leads, uh, and I could probably do with a couple here on the TS to TS lead. Anyway, that's it. Back to Matt in the shack for the final word. Okay, so just one point that I do want to make. Uh, I've talked about adding an, a direct box in between the audio interface and the radio. That's because I'm using a Yesu radio, and that uses, as normal, a uh, dynamic mic like this one that I'm using right now. Now, if you're using an ICOM radio, bear in mind that they do use normally an electric microphone, and as we said at the start, they use an 8 volt. Uh, power supply from the radio's bias which essentially boosts the audio signal that's coming out of the microphone before it gets to the radio so if you want to connect a dynamic microphone like this one to an ICOM radio using the method that I've just described the chances are you're not going to need a direct box and the reason is that the ICOM is expecting a higher level audio signal coming from an electric microphone and by comparison this dynamic microphone that I'm using now, if I connect that to an ICOM radio, it's going to be very quiet. Uh, it's about 20 dB more powerful is an electric microphone than a dynamic microphone. So if you've got an ICOM and you want to use a dynamic mic via an audio interface, then I would just simply go straight from the audio interface into the radio using the appropriate Heil lead and just using one of these connectors on the actual uh, end of the high lead to put straight into the back of the focus right. And that's it really, that's how I've set my audio up so that I can use any microphone, simply plug it in and I can have the microphone take the audio straight to the computer so I can talk to you as I am doing now and also use it on the radio as well at the same time. There are various ways of doing this, this is just how I've done it, you can actually use a, a mixer, a passive mixer. There's lots and lots of ways and there's lots of great videos out there showing you how to do it the reason i've done it the way i've done it is because it simply works and thanks so much for watching the video don't forget that i will be in the next couple of weeks reviewing the uh, the pr781 uh, doing a bit of a, a, an in-depth deep dive into that and also the heil pro 7 headset uh, that will also be getting a full deep dive video done on it as well as always, thanks so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, maybe consider doing so. It certainly helps the channel. And uh, don't, you know, don't be afraid to like the video or dislike the video or put something in the comments. I always try and put, you know, respond to the comments as well. Uh, it's it's a two-way process. If you want to say something in the comments, I'll always get back to you. Apart from that, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully catch you in the next couple of videos. By the way, if you're a channel member, and there's a link in the description on how to become a channel member, you'll get early access to the new videos on the uh, various Heil bits and pieces that have been sent out to me. So, you know, do consider becoming a channel member, or you can simply buy me a coffee. There's a link for that in the description also. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching, and see you in the next video.